Hi everybody. Today I am going to discuss about force of interest. Financial transaction occurs at discrete time points, but here we shall describe a way to measure investment growth in a continuous time framework. And this continuous process must be modeled mathematically as limits of discrete time processes where discrete time intervals get smaller and smaller. Once we approach measuring continuous growth of an investment, we face the force of interest and it is a continuously compounded interest rate and this force of interest at time t it is denoted by del sub t. Suppose accumulated value of an investment at time t it is 80. Then accumulated amount of interest in the one fourth year periods from time t to t plus 1 by 4. Within this range, accumulated amount of interest it will be a t plus 1 by 4 minus a t. And the one fourth year interest rate for that period it will be this term divided by a t. Nominal annual interest rate, if it is compounded quarterly, I mean in a year four times, then we can write it as i to the power 4, which is equal to this term multiplied by 4. Now our target is to generalize one fourth year example what we have used in last slide. If we look at this, you can see this is one fourth. So we want to generalize this as one by m. So the nominal annual interest rate can be written as this one. Before it was i to the power 4, now I am writing i to the power m and here it was 4 like this one because I have taken this from previous slide. So it was 4, we are writing here m. Here it is 1 by 4, I am generalizing it by 1 by m. And one important point is if m is increased, the time interval decreases. If we focus more and more closely on the investment performance, then easily we can say that the limit of i to the power m as m tends to infinity results as this. We have to focus more and more closely on the investment performance. Then we will understand this. So what comes i to the power infinity equal to limit i to the power m, m tends to infinity. Now this i to the power m, it is nothing but this one. So bring this term here, so we get this, i to the power infinity equal to this term. Now the limit can be reformulated. If it is reformulated and if we define the variable h to be h equal to 1 by m, 
then h tends to 0 as m tends to infinity. We can write it easily. Now, our equation i to the power infinity equal to comes like this one, replaced by h. How it comes? This I have taken from previous slide. So here the difference is there is a m. We are writing it 1 by h. 1 by h. And this at, we are taking it out of limit zone 1 by at. So it takes the form as this. And here also it was 1 by m we are writing 1 by m equal to h. So, I put here h. So, if you look at this part, limit h tends to 0, a t plus h minus a t divided by h. It is in calculus. We can say this part as derivative of a t. And we can write like this, d by dx and a t. So once we do differentiations of this, I mean this part we are writing as this, then it takes this form. So these whole things come as a prime t, derivative of a t, and already we have denominator a t, so it is here. So what you can say in these positions, i infinity, it is i infinity, we know it is a nominal annual interest rate compounded continuously and this i infinity, it can be interpreted as the instantaneous rate of growth of investment per dollar invested at time point t which is called the force of interest at time t. So easily in this position we can write it is del t because force of interest at time t, del t. That is why I wrote here which is called the force of interest. So what you have found? Force of interest, it is equal to a prime t divided by a t. Now we will use this in the next example. If the value of investment is given by a t, this is the function. What is the continuous force of interest at time t equal to 3? So already we got this in previous slide. This function and this is the derivative of this. So if we do differentiations of these equations, we get this derivative. And bottom, it will be exactly the same thing. Now putting the value for t equal to 3, Easily we find this and using calculator we get this 27.91.2791 converting to percentage it takes this shape. So continuous force of interest it is 27.91%. So it's very easy to calculate using this formula. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.